Okay, hello guys. Good evening. Welcome to the two of you that are already here. Thank you so much for always being on time. It is already time for us to start today's class. And as usual, and as all, I always ask you about it, can you guys hear me clearly? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. So um, as I always tell you, I do appreciate the fact that you're always on time. As I always say, um, that's part of your responsibility. I understand that some of you are probably tired and some of you worked during the day. And, uh, but if you're always on time, that's something really nice for you. So um, today we are going to be still talking a little bit about the simple past, but today we're going to have something different because yesterday we saw a uh, simple past focus on regular verbs. So today we are going to have irregular verbs. So, but, but as I always ask you uh, before we start today's class, I would like to ask you some questions regarding to the last topic that we saw yesterday. Or um, so in that in that way, we keep practicing or we have a brief recap about what we saw yesterday, and then we are going to move on to today's topic. Okay. So uh, let me see. Uh, since we are just five right now, well, four of you and five with me included. I'm going to ask you, let me see. I would like to know, just let me double check here. Regular verbs, okay, cool, do we have? All right, can someone mention to me one of the rules that we have when it comes to the regular verbs. Does any one of you remember any of the rules that we have in the regular verbs? Can someone mention to me any of them, the easiest one? No? So I will ask you, I will say a name then. So Vilma. Hello, Vilma, how are you doing today? Hello, teacher. You listen? You? Yeah, I can, I can listen to you. Yeah, okay. clear and perfect. Okay. So how are you doing you. today, Vilma? Are you okay? Um, yes, it's okay. I was okay, okay sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Now, Vilma, uh, let me ask you a question about yesterday's class. Do you remember how many types or how many differences in pronunciation do we have with the, uh, the regular verbs? Yes. How many? We have some, sorry. Sorry, teacher. No, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, and we have some with, um, in pronunciation with T. With T. Uh -huh. And D. D. Uh -huh. e, e D. E D. Perfect. Now, um, Claudia, are you there? Yes. Okay, Claudia. Now, can you or do you remember any example of any verb that we can pronounce with the letter T? Can you mention to me anyone, or do you remember anyone? Um, D? No, with the letter T, not D. Letter? Letter T as in tomato. No comprend. No comprend. You, you don't understand? Mm -mm. No, okay, let's see. Rosemary, did you understand Rosemary? Um, Asked. Aha, uh -huh, okay. 
Uh, do you do you remember another one? Mm, de la misma terminación T. With with the T pronunciation, um, yeah. Mix up. Okay, that's good. All right. Let me see. uh thank you, Rosemary. Um Maximo, can you give me an example of one or two verbs that ends in the pronunciation of the letter D as in David? D. D, yes. Called. Called, okay. Do you have another one? Do you remember another one? Feel. I'm sorry, say that again. Feel. Feel, okay. So the most important part of those, does any of you remember which are the letters are going to help us to understand when to make the pronunciation T, when to make the pronunciation D, and when to make the pronunciation ED? Do you remember the letters that the verbs or that well yeah that the verbs end in the ending letters of the verbs for example if a verb ends in the letter w what is the pronunciation that i'm going to do am i going to do the pronunciation t am i going to do the pronunciation d or the pronunciation ed D. D, yes. Okay. What about if the verb ends in the letter SH? T. Okay. T. The pronunciation T. Perfect. What about if the verb ends in the letter T? ED. 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 Perfect. Okay. So basically, what just uh, what you just have to do is to try to study. I understand that probably during the day it might be a little bit difficult for you to study. That's understandable, but I mean, just try to check the letter. Sometimes try to study five, ten minutes, or three minutes a day, and that way, that's gonna be easier for you to remember all those rules. So today we are going to move on to the part of irregular verbs. That's gonna be not complicated, but they have their own form to be pronunciated. So um, we're going to try to learn some rules, basic rules that are going to help us to understand when it comes to pronunciation, okay? So we're going to try to learn that today. So let me share the screen with you so you can understand what I'm talking about. So let me see. Just let me check here. Okay. There we have it. Perfect. Can everyone see it? Can you all see it, guys? Yes, teacher. Cool. Yes. So as you can see there, it says that today we're going to talk about the simple past still, but today we're going to focus on irregular verbs, okay? So as I told you before, today we're going to focus on that and we're going to try to learn also how to make questions in simple past. Because we already saw negatives, we already saw affirmatives, but today we are going to also have a brief review on how to create questions in simple past, okay? So, but first of all, we're going to, I mean, this information you already know it, so we're going to just omit it because this information you already know it. So, just for you to remember once again, what are irregular verb or what is an irregular verb? An irregular verb, simple as that, is a verb that do not end in ed why because they have their own form in past example we can see here some of them 
one of, of those characteristics that we have with the regular verbs is that some of them just change one letter from present or simple form to the past. For example, this one, what does become mean? That's a question for you all. What does become mean? Uh -huh. Regresar. Regresar. Uh -huh. Any other idea? Empezar. Empezar. Comenzar. Comenzar. Okay. All right. So let me tell you that become means llegar a ser. For example, if I say I would like to become a doctor. Me gustaría llegar a ser un doctor. It's like, I would like to become a doctor. So the verb means llegar a ser, become. So when we have the past, as you can see, the only difference that we do is just a vowel, actually. In present, become. In past, became. We have a lot of them, like give, gave. Drive, drove. So these are just simple rules that we are going to go one by one. And after that, we are going to have a list of some verbs in which we are going to try to uh, practice our pronunciation of those. Okay. We also have some other examples here, which are irregular verbs that change drastically and they have a different uh, form. So we have these ones right here. And let me see if you guys remember that pronunciation of these ones here. So I would like to ask um, Luis, can you help me Luis? Okay. Or are you are you having any situation with your internet, internet connection, or something like that? No. Because um, I I don't know if it is just me, but I can listen to you kind of like it's cutting off, something like that. I it's it's not clear your voice. Yeah. Okay. In, it might be a situation with with your internet, okay? So I I will I will not ask you that much because I I won't be able to listen to you, okay? But thank you so much for for always trying to participate, okay? So I would like to see if there's any volunteer. I won't say a name. I would like just to see if there's one volunteer. Me teacher one. One, go ahead, one. Tish, talk, mm -hmm. bring, go, leave, left, hear, her, buy, bought. Thank you very much. Claudia, would you like also help me doing the same thing, please? Teach, talk, bring, go. Okay, uh, uh, I'm going to stop you there. I'm sorry for interrupting you there. Can you repeat this again? Uh, repeat, please. Can you repeat this verb again? This one right here. Tau. Taut. Is, is, is that the way we say it? What? What? Uh, cool. This one right here. <sighs> My pronunciation, but no, I mean it's not, it's not. We just have to to practice. That's the only thing that we have to do. We say taught, okay? Taught. Taught. Keep on doing. Say the other ones, please. Bring brought. Okay. Leave left. Here 
hair. Okay. By boat. Excellent. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much, Flavia, for that. So um, now let's go directly with the rules. Let's see and let's try to understand how regular verbs work. We have three rules which are not necessarily a rule are, oh, let, let me ask you guys, can you all listen to me clearly or, or you still listen to uh, some sort of interference or something like that? Clear teacher. Clear. clear, okay. Clear. So, oh, um, I guess it is your internet connection, guys. Probably your connection is not working well, so that's probably the why you listen to me a little bit like blurred, something like that, like curtain up. Elizabeth, yes. Eh, no sé si usted me escucha. Yo desde ayer tengo problemas para ingresar. Yo hoy tuve que intentar por mucho, de muchas maneras para, in, para ingresar a la clase y sí escucho cortado. Really? Yeah, but I, I, can, I can listen to you clear, very clear. Pero yo se escucho un poquito cortado. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Prob prob it's probably the, the internet connection. You know, I don't know, but in the place where I, where I live, it's always cloudy. So it's always raining, always cloudy because there's a lot of mountains around the area. And uh, that's probably the reason why. But if the other ones can listen to me clear, Yes, teacher. I and, yes. Okay, let me know if if during the class you listen to some kind of interference. Let me know so I will try to slow down and try to make that clear. Okay. Uh, wow. So as I was saying before, we have these rules which are not necessarily a rule, are just some things that we have to follow in order to understand how irregular verbs work. For example, we have three categories. In those three, uh, three categories that we have, in the first one, it says that verbs that don't change. Let me tell you that in irregular verbs are some verbs, there are some verbs which will never change. Nunca van a cambiar este tipo de verbos. They will never change. So if I say caught in the present, I will say caught in the past. If I say hit in the present, I will say hit in the past. If I say fit the present, I will say fit in the past. So those verbs don't change even though you're talking about a different tense or you're using simple past. So you might be uh, asking yourself like, how is that possible? So how am I going to understand when someone is talking in past and when someone is talking in present, if those verbs never change? Very easy. The context around or the context about what that person is talking about, the context is going to give you the idea whether the person is talking in simple past or in simple present. Uh, are you guys following me? Si me están siguiendo, are you understanding? Yes. 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 You're, you're not understanding, Claudia. No more. No. Okay. So let me let me try to to like to, to explain you in different words. So there's some verbs in English that never change. Hay verbos que nunca cambian, never change. They never change. If you speak in present or if you try to speak in past, they will never change. And here we have some examples. 
Okay. If you say caught in present, you will say caught in past. If you say hit in present, mm -hmm. you will say hit in past or okay. fit and fit. So it means that these verbs never change, nunca cambian. So the context, el contexto is going to give you the idea. If mm -hmm. the person is talking in present or the person is talking in past, you will have to pay attention to the context. And according to that, you will understand that uh, about the tense the person is talking or using. Okay. Okay. All right. So now let's move on to category number two. In category number two, it says that there are some verbs that only change one vowel. And we already saw some examples before, but we will try to go with, the, with another ones. We see get in present, got in past, drink in present, drunk in past, sit in present, sat in past. So category number two, it talks about verbs that only change one vowel. That's it. Category number three. In category number three are those verbs that change completely their meaning. It means that they have a different meaning or a different uh, spelling in present and different spelling in past. For example, the verb catch. What does catch mean? Cachar. Cachar o atrapar, right? Catch the ball. If I throw it to you and I say, catch it, trapela o acachela, right? So as you can see, we say catch in present, but in past, we say caught. Caught. We never say caught. Never ever say caught. We say caught. Catch, caught. Bring, brought. Teach, taught. Taught, okay? Never say taught. Never ever, okay? So as you can see, the difference in spelling in present is completely different than the spelling in past. So that's why we have three different categories when it comes to irregular verbs. With the information I just told you guys, do you have any questions so far? No, teacher. No questions. All right, if there are some questions, I'm going to move on to the next part. And here we're going to be moving and trying to understand irregular verbs. Uh, it exists or there are some verbs that can be regular and irregular. They can have both. Estos verbos pueden ser regulares y irregulares al mismo tiempo. So it means, uh, significa de que si usted pone una, uh, lo pone como regular o lo pone como irregular, both of them are going to be correct. The only thing that is going to change is going to be pronunciation. That's it. For example, we have the verb born. What does, what does born mean to you? What's, what's the meaning of that? Quemar. Quemar. So, I use it as regular verb. Si lo uso como verbo irregular, yo voy a decir burned. You see, ed. Y vemos el ed. Ed. But if I use it as irregular, I will say burnt, making the pronunciation of the letter T. If I, I have the verb dream, what does the verb dream mean? What does soñar. Mean? Soñar, yes. So I can say dreamed in regular, or I can say dreamed in irregular. So either one of them. 
And both of them are going to be correct in pronunciation and spelling too. I have the verb learn, which I can say learned or learned. So both of them, both pronunciations are going to be correct and both the spellings are going to be also correct. We have the verb hang. What does hang mean? Does any one of you have any idea? Mm, maybe cargar t-shirt. I'm sorry, say it again. Cargar, maybe in your hand. Hang, yeah. Hang. Colgar. It's like colgar. Colgar. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hang. So if I want to use it as irregular, I will say hung. And if I want to use it as regular, I will say hanged with the D sound. Okay. We also have the verb smell. What does smell mean? Oler. Oler, like oler, smell. Okay. So you can use it as regular verb and you can say smelled or you can use it as irregular verb and you can say smelt. Either one of them. The same happens with the verb spell. What does spell mean? Exactly. Exactly. So if you use it as regular verb, you will say spelled. If you use it as irregular verb, you will say spelt. You notice, you listen to the difference. Even though you can use both forms, it will be up to you actually to verify if you want or if you want to use it as regular or irregular. It will be up to you, okay? but both of them are going to be correct. Why? Because these verbs can be used in both ways or in both forms, as regular and irregular. Questions, guys? So far, so good? Teacher. Yes. Este... No sé si entendí bien o no, pero lo que nos está explicando es que se, se pueden pronunciar de las dos formas. No. Estos verbos. No. What I, what I was saying is that estos verbos los puedes, tienen dos formas. Sí, uh -huh. pueden ser usados como regulares o irregulares. Y ambas formas van a estar correctas. Porque estos verbos tienen las dos formas. ¿Sí? Ustedes se preguntarán, ¿y entonces cuál es la que voy a utilizar? ¿Cuál utilizo? That will be up to you. Va a ser decisión de ustedes la cual quieran utilizar. ¿Sí? You can say either born or born. Ah, okay. go, go ahead. Eso veremos si, si lo tenemos la diferencia, diferente pronunciación. Of course, of course. Pronunciación. Pronunciación is going to be different. La pronunciación será, variará dependiendo si es regular o irregular. Dependiendo. Uh -huh. That will change. Okay, so for the other one. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Is that clear for the other ones? Si está claro para todos los demás? Teacher, pero este, ¿cómo sé yo cuándo puedo ocupar el verbo? En, o sea, sé que son correctas usar algunos verbos como los que nos está enseñando en regular e irregular, uh -huh. pero ¿cómo sé yo cuáles verbos son los que puedo utilizar para esas ocasiones? Eh, I mean, ¿Tienen alguna determinación o, o algo? Uh, I, uh, um, creo que no estoy, I think that I'm not understanding. Creo que no estoy entendiendo tu pregunta. Can you reformulate it? Eh, que si, 
cómo sé yo cuáles verbos son los que puedo usar como irregulares e irregulares. Esos son solo unos ejemplos. Oh, oh, yeah. Pero cómo sé yo cuáles son. I mean, I mean, there's, there's no more than, here we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no more than 10. No hay más de 10 verbos. No hay más de 10. So, oh. um, the, obviously, you, you will just have to memorize them, actually. Either you memorize them or solo te aprendes o utilizas el, la forma que te parezca más sencilla. Either regular or irregular. Porque al final las dos formas van a ser correctas. No hay ninguna incorrecta y otra correcta. Las dos van a ser correctas y entendibles en el momento que tú estés hablando. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about the other ones? The other ones is clear for you all? Well. Yes. yes teacher. All right, so let's move on then. Here we have a list, lista de verbos that never change, que nunca cambian, either in past or in present. If I say bet, I will say bet. If I say broadcast, I will say broadcast. If I say cut, cut. Hit, hit. Hurt, hurt. Let, let. Hurt, hurt. Quit, quit. Read. En este sí hay que hacer una diferencia. Este es el único que se escribe de igual forma, we write it in the same way, but we pronounce it different. Lo pronunciamos diferente y lo pronunciamos como el color rojo. Just only in pronunciation, solamente en pronunciación va a suceder esto. De ahí en spelling siempre va a ser igual en presente y en pasado. Just the pronunciation. So I will say in present, I will say read but in past i will say read that's the only difference see en pronunciación va a cambiar pero en spelling it will still be the same so then we have set set shut shut spread spread that's it okay those are some of the verbs that will never change when i say never change i mean in spelling and some of them never change either their pronunciation as i told you the only one that changes in pronunciation is the verb read so in past you will have to make the difference and you will have to say read instead of saying read is that clear guys Yes, the should have pronunciation. For me, yes. Real, real, and past simple, and past participle is the same pronunciation. Real. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Past participle is going to be read, read, read. The so same pronunciation. Participle okay. is going to be the same. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks. Perfect. So if there is no question, so I will move on to the next part. And in this part is when we have the list of the verbs in irregulars. All of them are irregulars. So as you can see, we are going to try to make the pronunciation. I know it's going to be difficult for you all to pronunciate it, but I will suggest you, su, uh, sugerencia para todos. Yo lo voy a repetir, I will repeat it here. Y traten de repetirlos ustedes en su casa, ¿sí? Ahí donde está, no es necesario que encienda. It's not necessary for you to turn on your microphone. No, it's not necessary. You can have your microphone off, but you're listening to me and you're repeating, okay? So, let's go. We have arise, arose. Okay, I, I, I will explain you this first. The second column, la segunda columna, pertenece al pasado, al simple past, del que estamos hablando. But also, 
Uh, es importante que se aprenda en el pasado participio, ¿no? Siempre es utilizado, but you will see later on. Lo van a ver eh, más después. But we will also make the pronunciation just for you to know, like in the future, if you see it, el futuro si lo ven, so you already know how we make the pronunciation, okay? So let's go, uh, let, let's start. Arise, arose, arisen. Awake, awaked, awoke, awaked, awoken. B, was, where, been. Bur, bore, born, born. Bit, bit, beaten. Become, became, become. Begin, began, begun. Ben, bent, bent. Bet, bet, bedded, bet, bedded. Bid, bid, bait, beaten. Bid, bid, bid. Bind, bound, bound. Bite, bit, beaten. Bleed, bled, bled. I hope every one of you try to make the pronunciation at home. So uh, I would like to have like two or three volunteers. Volunteers to help me in making the pronunciation. If you want to participate, like raise your hand over there. Okay, Claudia. Thank you very much, Claudia. So I will ask you to make the pronunciation of the first three verbs. Okay. Arise, arose, arise. Mm -hmm. Awake. Uh, <laughs> it's complicated. Try to do awake. Awake. Uh huh. Awake. Okay. Awake. Be be was where be. Thank you very much for uh, making that pronunciation. Uh, someone else. Any other volunteer? Remember the reason for this is just to participate. Rosemary, thank you very much for that. Rosemary, I will ask you to make the pronunciation of another three, starting from here. Bill. Uh -huh. Born. Born. Uh -huh. Born. Thank you. Beat. Beat. Beaten. Okay. Became. Became. Become. Okay. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Elizabeth, can you help me uh, with another three? And we're going to start from here. Elizabeth. Sorry. <laughs> Me había activado el micrófono. Okay. <laughs> es um, beat. Uh -huh. No, begin. Uh -huh. Began. Begun. Okay. Ben. Bet. Bent. Excellent. Uh, bet, bet, bird, uh -huh. bet, bird. Okay, thank you very much for that. Carlos Antonio, would you like to help me with another three, please? 
Bit. Bit. Betty. Biden. Okay. Bit. Bit. No lo veo por la. No veo por la por la mano. Pero me voy a quitarla. Bit. 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 Okay. Bit. Boarding. Bog. Okay. Thank you very much for that. All right. So okay. um, I understand, guys, that right now it might be a little bit difficult for you to remember the exact pronunciation of that. I know it's complicated, like to to make the right pronunciation, because you know, in Spanish there's some sounds that we do not do. Like in English, you have to make to exaggerate sometimes to exaggerate some words to make pronunciations a little bit exaggerated uh, and make pronunciation that sometimes we never do in Spanish. So I completely understand that it, it might be a little bit complicated for you to remember all the pronunciations. But the challenge for you here is to try at least to remember the, the verbs that we commonly use in daily basis, okay? Those verbs that you usually use when you go to the store, when you go to the mall, when you travel, uh, when you work, when you study, all those verbs that you use in all the environments that we have outside, you can try to practice those verbs because those are the verbs that we commonly use in the English language too, okay? So is there any questions so far? Okay. Sorry. Not teacher. No. All right, so we have a lot of verbs. We have a very big list of verbs. So what I was thinking, guys, if you want, of course, I can share this, um, this slide or presentation with you, or I can share a link or something like that where you can have access to all those verbs so you can study at home or you can try to find that by yourself. I mean, you can go on Google and try to find like list of regular or irregular verbs and you could try to study those at home. As I told you before, I completely understand that that might be a little bit confusing for you. But if you have any question regarding to any topic in English, feel free to ask me. If you, uh, if you think that in the WhatsApp group, someone is going to tell you something, okay, send me a message directly and ask me, teacher, how do you pronounce that? How do we say that? And I can help you, okay? So we are here to help each other because it will be very, very amazing if in the future, I don't know, we can, um, what if I'm, I'm walking in San Salvador or any other part of the country and all of a sudden you see me and it's like, oh, teacher, okay. And we start speaking in English. That will be fantastic to do something like that. So if you guys have any questions regarding to anything, feel, feel free to ask, okay? So we're just going to have, uh, we're going to just see those verbs. As I told you, we have a big list here. So we are not going to read them all because of the time. You know, time is running and running and running and we don't even feel the time. So we're gonna go with this part, which is the last one. And I'm going to repeat them again. And as we did in the first part, I will repeat them and try to make the pronunciation you at home, okay? So uh, we're gonna go with this one. Take, took, taken, teach, taught, taught, tear, pour, horn, tell, told, told, think, thought, Thought, 
throw, through, thrown. Trav, trod, trodden, or trod. Understand, understood, understood. Wake, woke, woken. Wear, wore, worn. Wave, wove, woven. Weep, wept, wept. Win, won, won. Gring, grung, grung. Write, wrote, written, written. Okay, so. With, um, I mean, here you have also the, the meaning of all of them. So I'm just going to move on to the next part, but I would like to ask you, do you have any questions so far? Are we understanding how to use that and how not to use it? Well, I, I will take that as a yes, I mean, okay. So as I told you at the beginning today, we were going to also learn how to make questions in simple past. So here we have this important information. We actually have two ways of creating questions in simple past. And this is the first one. Of course, when we make questions, we have to use the auxiliary the auxiliary for the past form or the past tense is div, okay? Then we will have to use a subject, a verb, and of course the complement and the question mark at the end. Now, how do you answer to those questions? You can answer in the short way. Example, if someone asks you, did Max play football? Something very important when we say questions. Intonation of the questions is something very important. Did Max play football? Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Did you watch the film yesterday? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. So this is the very easiest way to form questions in simple past. But remember that as I told you uh, like two classes ago, that with the verb be, because it has its own way of the past form, the questions are different. Because if I say, were you in Lit Simpkin last week? Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Okay. So as you can see, the questions in past with the verb be are completely different than if you're using another verb other than, than the verb be. Okay. So that's what I need you to also understand. As you can see, creating questions is not that difficult. It's actually very easy and not complicated. So do we have any question? No. No teacher. No, no teacher. Very good. So here no, we have form number two. What changes from form number one to form number two? The only thing that changes from, from one to two is that. Here at the beginning, we are using a question word. Which are the question words? ¿Cuáles son las WH questions, guys? What, where, when, who, who, why, how long? Why and how long? All of them, all of them. So those are the question words or WH questions. What it changes from form number one to form number two is that in this case, at the beginning, we are going to ask a WH question. And we are going to say, 
What did you play yesterday evening? What did I tell you last time that, or what is the difference when we use an auxiliary first and when we use a WH question at the beginning? What's the, the answer, teacher? The answer, thank you very much, Vilma. The answer changes, why? Because when I use the auxiliary first, I will say, or I can say yes, or no. But when I use a WH question at the beginning, like this ones, I will never ever answer the question with yes or no. I will have to give complete answer to that, okay? We have the examples here. What did you play yesterday evening? If someone asks me that question, I will never say yes, no, because it doesn't make sense at all. So we're going to say a complete answer, and we have, I played computer games. Like, when did she meet her boyfriend? She met him yesterday. Where did they go after the match? They went to a cafe, okay? As you can see, we give complete answers. But what happens with the questions with the verb be? Also, we have to give complete answers when we have a WH question at the beginning. And we have one example here. Where were you yesterday? I was at the cinema, okay? As you can see, it's very, very easy to make questions and simple ones. But do we have any questions still here? Or is everything clear to them? No question. No question. Okay. And because we have time, y porque tenemos tiempo, vamos a hacer el pequeño examen que no hicimos ayer. So, I need everyone to be ready for that, okay? So, what I need you to do, and I will tell you the instructions right now. I am going to tell you a verb. It can be either regular, or irregular. I will tell you that pronunciation and I need you to write in your notebook, in a piece of paper or anything that you have at home, write it there and then you will send me a picture of that to the WhatsApp group. Understood? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Repeat, Everyone please, I'm sorry? Repeat, please. Okay, so I was saying that I will tell you a bird. It can be either regular or irregular, okay? Then you will have to write the verb in your notebook, in a piece of paper, or anything that you have at home. Then as soon as we finish, tan pronto como terminemos, as soon as we finish, the exercise, you will have to send me, I mean, take a photo of that and send it to the WhatsApp group so I can check that later. What I'm going to check, lo que voy a revisar es spelling y verificar si son capaces de entender what I'm saying, okay? This practice is about active listening. Escucha activa, okay? So we are going to see, vamos a ver que también tenemos ese oídito cuando hablamos en inglés, okay? So did everyone understand? Necesito que todos confirmen si entendieron. Yes, yes. Sure. yes, yes. Sure. Okay, okay, okay. Porque después andamos ahí como, no, teacher, yo no lo había entendido, por eso lo puse así, por eso aquí, por eso allá, no. I want you to be clear since the beginning so we don't have any problem later on, okay? So are we ready for that? Is everyone ready? So let's start. Let's see. Okay, let me just pause this part right here. And 
Okay. I will repeat, guys, the verb twice, if necessary, only if necessary. I will repeat it three times. But the, the majority is going to be twice, no more than that, okay? So let's go with the first one. Number one, appeared, appeared. Let me know when you're done so I can move to number two. Me hacen saber cuando ya todos estén listos so I can move to the next one. Okay, what happened? Todo bien en casa? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think that we had enough time. Suficiente tiempo. So let's move on to number two. Number two, protected. Protected. It's fine, Elizabeth. Do not cry. If someone of you is having issues with the internet, let me know now. So I will try to repeat, try to repeat the third time. Okay, so I think it's not necessary a third time. So let's go to number three. Number three is let me see. Drove. Drove. Are you still there, guys? Yes. Cool. So let's move on to number four. Number four is felt, felt. When you are ready, like someone raise your hand or something like that, I don't know. So I can know that you already finished, so I can move. Okay, Fatima raise her hand, so it, it seems like we're fine. So let's see, another one. This will be number five, I guess. Yes. An easy one, this is gonna be finished, finished. This one is very Be honest, okay? Don't be using any translator. Honesty, please. Thank you, Fatima, for confirming. So let's move on to another one. Let's see. Eight. Eight. Thank you, Fatima. How many do we have till now? Seven or something like that, right? Seven, yes. Seven, okay, let's go with number eight. Number eight. Hi, I, teacher, I'm sorry, I have six, eight. Is it? Yes, teacher, uh, that word is the seven. Seven? Yes, with this, 
that I have teacher... six. I have six. Uh -huh, I have six complete. Six, six more, bear. but the, now you say the seventh. Will you say? Uh, seven. So this one that I'm going to say is number seven. Yes. 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 Okay, got it, got it. Okay, let's go with number seven. Number seven is uh, graduated. Graduated. And that's the last one that we're going to have. We're just going to have seven. Uh, so I need you now to take a picture and start sending those verbs or those pictures to the WhatsApp group. Okay, everyone. So we are 12. So it means that I will have, no, it's 12, 12 with me. So I will have 11 pictures on the WhatsApp group right now. Uh, so, um, that's going to be all for today, guys. Okay. So I don't know if you have any question before we go. No, if there's no any question, that's going to be all for today. I will just be waiting for your pictures to be sent to the WhatsApp group. So that's going to be all for today. I hope you all have a good night and see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye.